Hi, everybody. We're back. This is Dave Vellante. Big day to After Dark. We're here at the Tug event. We're in Boston, and we're catching all the entrepreneurs. We're seeing the VCs act in action tonight. There's a lot of activity going on in Boston. You know, Boston used to be a relatively, you know, five, seven years ago, in the in the tech space, it was kind of quiet. You know, you had a, a big pharmaceutical push, uh, a big life sciences push. Well, folks, enterprise tech is back. Big data is really the wave that everybody's riding. And we're here with Adam Fuchs, who is the CTO of Squirrel, a company that we've been tracking. You've been following some of the developments. Adam, welcome back to theCUBE. Thanks, Dave. So we were talking off offline here. You have a new concept, that at least, at least it's new to me, that, uh, that I'd like you to introduce to our audience. Talk about it a little bit. Yeah, so the thing I'm excited about these days is schema statistics. Schema statistics. Schema statistics. Now we know what statistics are. What are schema statistics? Yeah, so you may have heard of this concept of flexible schemas, yeah, sure. right? So this is, you, uh, you bring in a data set, you don't know anything about it, but you want to analyze it alongside all your other data, right? So if you have a database that supports flexible schemas, you can just throw that data in there, it sits alongside it, you can uh, query across that and all your old data at the same time, right? So that's flexible schemas. Schema statistics is a tool that lets us do a little bit of modeling along with that. All right, so traditionally, if you're going to bring a lot of big data sets together, you kind of have two different approaches you can take. One is put everything together in flat files and you know, run MapReduce over it. Uh, the other side is you know, do a couple of years of ontology modeling to figure out how all the data fits together. Right? Neither one of those is perfect. On the one side, you really don't have much idea of how things fit together. On the other side, <clears throat> You do a couple of years of modeling and then maybe your data fits, maybe it doesn't. Right? If it doesn't, you start over. <laughs> if it doesn't, you start over, you do a couple more years, right? Schema statistics is middle of the road here, right? So we take data, we throw it into a flexible schema database, and then we ask questions about what's in there, right? What's the schema? What fields are present? You know, how many times did I see each field? What are the categorical values? You know, those types of things. Uh, so what's, what this supports is the iterative data refinement cycle. So is it, um, it sounds like a system's autodidactic. It teaches itself as it, as it goes along. Yeah, there's a lot of learning involved here, right? And this is kind of a base layer. It's one of these discovery analytics that supports machine learning over schema matching and those types of problems. Now, uh, last time you were on was at HackReduce. Uh, we talked about in concept Squirrel Analytics. I know you can't talk much about it because it's an unannounced product, but but it's getting close. Um, I know you guys are very excited. We had Eli on earlier. He get, he showed us a little leg. Um, so you got to be excited. This is your baby coming to life. I'm really excited, and we're you know right on the cusp of re releasing version one of Squirrel Analytics. And on one of those analytics in there is schema statistics. Now I'm really excited. Now talk about this uh, more about this uh, this technology. Where's it come from? Is it uh, is it out of academia? Did you guys invent it? Where, 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 that come come from Google? Talk about that a little bit. Yeah, so it's it's a mix, right? A lot of these things come go back 20, 30 years, but we're really bringing them together under this purview of big data. Uh, so really, a lot of this was incubated inside of the National Security Agency. Right, we were looking at a lot of these concepts for bringing disparate data sources together, uh, sources where we didn't control the schemas. Right, a lot like if you're going to do a search of the web, you don't control the format that people put on their HTML pages. Right? How about, um, let me ask you a question about patents. In this world of open source, you know, sometimes the people forget about patents. Uh, what's your philosophy and strategy uh, around patents? Uh, have you, have you, you know, filed a bunch? Have you filed a ton? Have you filed none? Talk about that a little bit. Yeah, so we're uh, we're just getting into the whole patent battle here. It's interesting coming out of the uh, federal government spaces. Patents are are a little bit different, uh, a little different concept. Federal government actually can hold patents, which I found interesting. And I didn't know that. I, it, uh, that's um, uh, yeah. My my mind saying, wait, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah, they can't hold copyright but they can hold patents and they can actually request patent royalties. Um, but uh, you know, in the open source space, that's very different, right? The people look upon patents in general as a defensive mechanism, right? So, so we're looking at potential patents that we can throw on top of Squirrel Analytics. Uh, and I think there are a few that we're, we might get in there. Um, <clears throat> but really, you know, we're looking at those as ways of protecting 
uh, our own uh, mechanisms, our own software. Yeah, right. I mean, it's very rare that a small company uses them uh, aggressively. Although we have, we have seen. I don't know if you, we follow a company called CleverSafe, who's actually begun to use the, its patent portfolio. I think it's sort of a smokescreen, but I think that that's absolutely the right thinking. Is uh, that defensive piece? Yeah, absolutely. And you know, we're. We're kind of in a good situation where we're drawing a lot of our technology from Google, and Google sort of has a patent umbrella that actually covers some of this technology, uh, which is which is nice for us. I mean, their their whole "do no evil" motto is uh, a good thing to build on top. Yeah, of. Yeah, so you make friends with them, maybe develop a little IP on your own, you sh share some of that with the community, and uh, and then you know try to make some money while you're at it. Yeah, you know, I think at this point we're at the cusp of a lot of new ideas in big data processing, and uh, you know, these things are so early on. Uh, you know, patents are going to be worth something, but I, I think a lot of this technology has yet to be developed. So we're really excited about the pace of new technology. And, and yeah, I mean, we were talking to Eli before uh, about sort of you know the 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 transition point that we're in. A lot of people kicking the tires in big data. You know, playing around with various technologies. HBase is obviously one of them. Um, but looking forward and seeing, wow, we may need something more robust, something more scalable, something more secure. That's obviously where you guys play. You're going hard after the developer community. Obviously, you've got to uh, to get traction in the marketplace. Uh, maybe talk about that initiative a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. So first of all, I'd like to say that Squirrel Analytics is really trying to be at the nexus of security, scalability, and adaptivity. Right, so we're trying to really bring all those things together. And one anecdote I can tell is that if you build a secure system, maybe it's not all that useful because if you can't ask questions about the data that's in there, you don't get much out of it. So security on its own, it's not all that useful. When you couple it with scalability and with adaptivity, adaptivity in the sense of being able to build lots of applications on top of it, that's really where you get a lot of uh, you know, core capabilities in, in terms of big data processing. Well, the thing I, lo I really love about what uh, the Accumulo project has done is you've, you've developed that fine grain level of security without the compromise on performance. If you tried to bolt that on to an existing database, what, what would happen to the performance and scalability? Well, I mean, the really, the really tricky part there is that if you try to model security at the same time as you're modeling your application, uh, then you can model one application that way, and the next application, you got to remodel security, how it fits in there. So the, the nice thing about fine-grained access controls is that you can separate the modeling of the security and the application, and it makes application development a lot cheaper on top of it. Yeah, and it's almost as though, you know, you guys are trying to position it as security as something you can just for, forget about I mean, it's, uh, and worry about all the other value that you can bring to the table. Well, at least you can solve it as a separate problem, right, which is really... Yeah, I guess you can't ever forget about security, can you? <laughs> we hope not. I mean, we're, <laughs> we're based on people not forgetting about security. So. Excellent. Well, listen, Adam, really appreciate you coming on. You're such a wealth of knowledge, and uh, it's always good to see you, and uh, we'll let you get back to the event. All right. Thanks, Dave. Good seeing you again. All right, everybody, keep it right there. We'll be right back with our next guest. This is theCUBE. This is Dave Vellante, and we're live here at the Tug event. Keep it right there.